Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in the Saturday within the Easter octave. Our text today is taken from Mark chapter 16 verses 9 to 15. And I've entitled today's teaching, The Inner Circle of Disbelief. Once again, I want to remind you that in case you want a teaching on the Acts of the Apostles, which is the first reading, chapter 4, verse 13 to 21, just go to the description box and... Uh, click on the links or just send me a WhatsApp message and I will add you to the daily teachings. But re let's read the text today, Acts, sorry, Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 15. Mark chapter 16, so let's start that. Now, after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive, and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking to the countryside, and they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe him. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole of creation. Now, for most Christians, my dear friends, the Easter proclamation, He is risen, has become what I think is a creedal proclamation, a creedal formula. You know, we don't have any difficulty saying Jesus is risen, Jesus is alive. However, creedal proclamations, if not truly reflected upon can come as a nasty shock when God decides to put our proclamations or our faith statements to the test. Now, let me give you two examples about this. Take for example the proclamation we sing at Mass. We say, I surrender all. Now, this is not a creedal proclamation, but it is a proclamation of faith, I surrender all. But what if God decided to take you seriously and take all you have and truly ask for your surrender to his will. Would you be mad at God or would you be shocked at what God did? Or let me give you another example. You see, we profess our own hope in the resurrection of the body, of life everlasting. We profess heaven and hell. Now, what if we profess this, preach it, proclaim it, but not live it or truly believe it? The result will be seen in us standing on the wrong side of the pearly gates, literally. Why? Because I've, I've, I've said, yes, Lord, I want to go to heaven, but everything I do, I do towards hell. I, I, I acknowledge heaven and hell, but everything I do is still taking me to hell. I'll be on the wrong side of the pearly gates. I'm proclaiming, I'm acclaiming, I'm professing what is said in the creed, but I do not believe it. Now, why am I saying all of this? In the narrative of today, the eleven find themselves on the wrong end of the stick. The resurrection was something Jesus spoke of at length. And he does this thrice in this very Gospel of Mark. Look at chapter 8, look at chapter 9, look at chapter 10. Three times he'll talk about his passion, death, but on the third day I will rise again. Now, this is not some new, something new, a new concept that he suddenly floats after his death. Yet, when the resurrection of Jesus did come to pass, scripture tells us in verse 14, they stubbornly refused to believe. Stubbornly refused to believe. Now, the word stubbornness finds its way in the Eastern narrative to describe the 11 who were the closest collaborators of Jesus. What a word to use, no? These 11 were the inner circle that had heard Jesus preach every doctrine over three years. The resurrection was admittedly a tough one for them to understand. I get it because look at Luke chapter 18 verse 34. Jesus talks about his passion, death and resurrection. And scripture tells us they understood nothing about these things. In fact, what he said was hidden from them and they did not grasp what he said. This is recorded in Luke. Yet, you will see also at the raising of Lazarus in John chapter 11, Martha, this simple woman, she professes not only her faith in the resurrection on the last day, but at Jesus' prompting, professes her faith in Jesus as the resurrection 
and the life. The eleven struggled to understand the resurrection. Martha got it all right. So why is it that the eleven did not heed the words of Mary of Magdala, whom the Lord appeared to in today's text of chapter 16 verse 9? And why did the eleven not listen to the two disciples in the country who, whom Jesus appeared to in verse 12? Interestingly, the gospel text of today lays it out very clearly as to why they did not believe. You see, the closest and the dearest in Jesus' inner circle, we are told and read that very clearly in verse 14. They lacked faith. They lacked faith and were stubborn. These are very, very harsh words for us to hear in the Easter narrative and that also about Peter and John and James and Thomas. I mean, come on. You don't expect these words to be said. They were stubborn. They lacked faith. It's, it's, it's really harsh to listen to that. But make no mistake, Jesus did not upbraid and shout at the eleven because they betrayed or denied or ran away from him during his passion and suffering. We know from the Gospels that uh, he asked the women after his resurrection, he says, go to my brothers, yeah, tell them to meet me in Galilee. He calls them brothers and that, he, that shows he has clearly forgiven them. But when faith is rejected by them, when faith is rejected because we cling to our stubbornness, then you see a humble Jesus now no longer meek, but a, a Jesus who is not meek, but a Jesus who is riled. Riled meaning he is really angry. Now, Jesus is not unreasonable in his anger when he upbraided them. His resurrection was something he discussed several times. And after his resurrection, he sent Mary of Magdala. He sent the two disciples, go and tell my brothers I have risen. They refused to believe. So here's the point I want you to take home today, that stubbornness is a choice. Yeah, You don't say I was born stubborn, nobody was born stubborn. It's a choice and because it's a choice, it is a sin. In scripture, this word stubborn is often surrounded by other challenging words such as proud, rebellious unfaithful, greedy, obstinate, defiant. You'll find these words coming side by side with the word stubbornness. Now, none of these actions or attitudes are in line with perfect love. None of these words are in line with perfect love. The sin of stubbornness and arrogance, which is strengthened by pride, is really awful. And this is the sin that the devil himself, when you read all the scriptures, the devil himself, yeah, uh, in Genesis, in Isaiah, and Ezekiel, and Thessalonians, he, the devil will deceive you into believing his lie. Then he will entangle you in his punishment if you let him and if you succumb to stubbornness. So it is ironic that the Easter message was at first rejected by the eleven. Why? Because of their stubbornness. Those who are closest to Jesus the inner circle was stubborn. They wanted to live in their own belief. And be careful, because there are many people in the church who want to live in their own belief. This is stubbornness. It's spiritual stubbornness. What is the result? You could have been close to Jesus. The twelve, the eleven were close to Jesus for, for three years. Still they did not believe. You can be close to Jesus for 25 years. Still you will not believe, because there is stubbornness. So, we have to understand that the stubbornness exists, the sin exists, because Christianity is not sanitized. Christianity is not given to us in a package with lovely bows. The fact, very often, my dear friends, that failures, the failures of the eleven are literally out on display on Easter should be a reason why each one of us should also evaluate our failings. If they could fail on Easter Sunday, then we can also fail. So we need to evaluate our own failings, our own stubbornness, and we need to bring it to the Lord in surrender. We have to die to our pride, die to our thoughts, die to our ways, die to our wants, die to our beliefs, in order for the Lord to truly rise in our hearts. I hope you enjoyed this teaching this Saturday. Um, I am not going to be doing teachings on Sunday, 
during the Easter season. I want to take a bit of a break also, uh, also because I'll be traveling to Goa uh, next week and so I have to catch up with all the teachings. But today I want to wish uh, Kesta uh, a very happy birthday and also my to Kanchan Hatyal. Kanchan is uh, one of my former parishioners in Maladis, but she's now one of our teachers in our school here at St. Stephen's and she gives her time voluntarily to teach uh, the smallest, the little ones and she does it with great love. She and her husband and her children um, as for the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years that I've known them have been generous and kind and caring towards the church. And God bless them for their generosity to just about everybody. Whenever charity, uh, there's an opportunity to reach out to someone in charity, that family, from whatever the meager amounts that they have, are always happy to share it with others. And God bless you, Kanchan. I do hope you're listening to this message. Uh, but I also know that uh, today I want to pray also for um, Joel and Elisha, who will be married today. Um, I will be blessing that nuptial this evening. Um, Joel, many of you know him. Whenever I have an outreach, Giselle sings and Joel plays on the keyboard. And Elisha, incidentally, also as a teacher in our primary, in our nursery school, she teaches with Kanchan. So we've got a wedding this evening and a birthday, and they'll all be together. Pray for me, everybody. I'll see you on Monday. Once again, there will be no teachings on Sunday. I will put out the text form or I will put out the older teachings uh, for those of you who get my uh, who get the morning um, uh, links I will be giving the former te the older teachings tomorrow is Divine Mercy Sunday so I will do something on divine one of the older teachings on Divine Mercy I'll put them out so in case you'd like to get the teachings um, of the links of the of the previous teachings please uh, send me a whatsapp message and I will uh, add you to the daily teachings. Bye everybody. God bless you. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and leave your comments.